Hi, I'm Paul, and this is Diana. Hello. Diana, are you ready to learn about how chronic pain works? I'm ready to learn, Dr. Paul. All right. Let's start with our hands. Try just lifting your finger a little bit. What do you feel? I feel a little bit of sensation. Okay. What happens if you lift it a little bit more? Um, I can feel pain now. Okay. And if you lift it still more, it's still a little bit more pain. Okay. And you let it go. What do you feel? Pain went away now. Pain went away. All right. Let's look at the model to see how that works. First, just lift the finger a little bit. As you lift the finger just a little bit, there's sensation there. There's a signal coming from the hand, but there's no pain. If you lift it a little bit more, you start getting pain. As you lift it into more dangerous regions, you start feeling more and more pain. And so the pain is an accurate representation of your danger. This is how pain should work. But look what happens if you get an injury. Lift it all the way up till you get an injury. Now, the signal from your hand is not coming down so fast because the injury has to heal over days or weeks or months. But eventually, the injury does heal and you're back to no signals or low signals from the body. But the pain has not gone away, you notice. Do you see anything in the model to suggest why the pain didn't go away? Um, I saw at the same time the signal went down, this went up, the sensitization. That's it. Sensitization is like a volume control knob on pain. And so now, even though the signals are safe, because of the sensitization, there's pain. Now that there's sensitization, try lifting the finger the amount that would have been safe, or lift, just lift the finger safe amounts, and you see you get intense pain, even though you're lifting the finger safe amounts. Now when this happens to people, sometimes they feel like, well, I better just not move. But if you become inactive, it can actually further increase sensitization. Other things that can increase sensitization are like catastrophization. You know, if you have the idea, oh no, this pain is forever, is this the rest of my life? That kind of thoughts increase your sense of being in danger, and pain is a danger signal. Other things are trauma, other trauma in your life. If you have a loss, a friend dies or something, all those things can further increase sensitization. So you can get into a situation where you have intense pain even though you're actually safe. This is an example of being sore but safe. Now at this point, there's not much you can do at the level of the body to help the situation because you're already at safe levels. Um, do you see anything else from the model that you might be able to do to help your problem and decrease your pain? Um, I see that there's an education tab at the bottom. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see what happens if I press it. Ah, notice that this lowers sensitization. Just learning about chronic pain, learning like you are right now, that you can be sore but safe helps decrease your fear, and decreasing your fear will decrease your chronic pain. Try something else. Um, I'll try therapy this time. Therapy can reduce your sensitization because it can reduce stressors in your life. If cognitive therapy and physical therapy can tell you how to move safely. Okay. Um, speaking of movement, I guess I'll press the movement tab now. Movement is good. Motion is lotion. Motion will help reduce sensitization. Gentle motion. Um, what would happen if we enacted like three or two of them at the same Try time? Try it. Um, I'll do movement, biofeedback, and mindfulness practice. Okay. Oh, it's going down yeah. faster now. It is. Try getting it down all the way. I'll click all five. All right. So now that you've brought down your sensitization, you have zero pain for safe levels of signal from the body. This is how you overcome chronic pain due to sensitization. Oh, okay. All right. That'll do it for the first video.